Hello and welcome to the Scale Modeling Cafe and welcome to my take on the 2023 Airfix new releases. Quite an extensive list actually right across all different uh, types of kit. All I'm going to talk about here are the aeroplanes. Some nice uh, military vehicles, uh, a, a ferret armoured car and a British Army truck, that's, uh, that's really nice. They'll be really welcomed by the uh, military vehicle fraternity, I'm sure. Um, some quick build stuff, the, the bus and the taxi, they look, they look quite cool and some cars and things. But I'm just going to talk about aeroplanes because that's pretty much what I exclu exclusively do. I'm going to split this into two parts. I'm going to talk about the updated moulds first and then the new releases second. And at the end, I'll just give some, uh, some general thoughts on, on Airfix and, and where we are. Right, um, I've got my list here uh, on, on the back of a map. Uh, right, updated tools, 72nd first. Um, so there's three of these actually, 172nd and 248th. 72nd, the Mosquito, uh, PR16. I have to uh, keep referring to my notes on that. I'm not really that au fait with Mosquitoes and their particular variants. Clearly a development from the previous one. Um, I can't remember what mark that was now. Whatever it is, with the twin stage uh, Merlin, that, the, the bomber version. This uh, is the PR version. I'd imagine it's got a new Bombay with clear parts for the windows, maybe hopefully completely in clear, so you can just mask them off, that would be nice. And some camera detail behind that, I'm sure. Uh, I don't know if the bomber version had the teardrop on the canopy, um, so maybe new canopy parts as well, new cockpit parts, I don't know. But a really welcome release. I really like the PR Mosquito. I think in that all over blue, it really suits the shape of that beautiful aeroplane. I, I've got a feeling one of the marking options is the American one with the stripy tail. Uh, that would be ace. D-Day markings. So actually quite a colourful model that, that'll look like. The bomber version had, uh, I think, I'm right in saying an incorrect Bombay. Uh, unfortunately, when they did their research, uh, I'm pretty sure that the restored aeroplane that they looked round had an incorrect Bombay on it and they copied it which is a which is a real shame uh, not insurmountable uh, it can be fixed and I know there's um, YouTube videos out there showing you how to fix that I'm just wondering uh, I'm hoping that they've taken the opportunity to tweak that if it's the similar sort of supposed to be the similar shape um, we shall see um, but a really welcome release I'm actually quite tempted by that. I am a big fan of 72nd. I do like the Mosquito. I think that aeroplane looks much better in flight. So I may be tempted to do it on a stand, but more than likely not, actually. Um, it just It's an aeroplane that looks like it should be in the air and wants to be in the air. That retails for $23.99 and is out in the spring, so relatively soon, actually. Um, so that's the Mozzie. Okay, 2 and 48 scale, again, both tweaked tools. So first of all, the Hunter, looking down here, that's the FGA9, FR10 and GA11. Uh, I'm pretty sure that the, the GA11 is the Fleet Aeron version with the big uh, light in the nose. And that is really welcome because that looks lovely in that extra dot C grey over the white scheme. That's really cool. The FGA9 was the ground attack version, so maybe we're going to get some different ordnance for that, bombs, rockets, etc. I don't know. Um, probably fuel tanks. FR, clearly fighter reconnaissance. So I don't know if that had a different nose with cameras in it, but um, the FGA9 and the GA11 have got different noses, so maybe, you know, it's with a separate nose, then you can do anything really, can't you? So that's really cool. What I do know as well is they acknowledged that the previous version, which I've got a feeling might be the Mark VI, there were some uh, errors that had crept in during the research. 
and they've fixed some of the errors. Whether they fixed all the errors or not, I don't know, but that's really encouraging to hear that they've acknowledged that and they're striving for excellence and they've gone ahead and spent the money to tweak it because they could have just left it and released it. Um, so that is really encouraging. I know AFX pride themselves on their accuracy and they really put massive emphasis on it. Clearly they're not perfect and um, no model is perfect, but the fact that they've gone out and, and corrected some things I think is um, really awesome. So kudos to them for that. That's re going to retail at $46.99, which I think is actually really quite expensive for a 48 scale hunter. Um, you will be able to get it at discount discounted prices when it's released. That'll be uh, that's in the summer. Um, but I, I think that's a little bit on the dear side for, for me. But um, again, they've done their marketing. Um, they know exactly what they're doing. And I suppose, you know, if, if you take it to the extre extreme, it's a lot more cost effective to sell one item at £100 than it is to sell 10 items at £10. Um, well, I'm probably sell 11 items at £10, actually, um, given all the other costs associated with it. So, you know, I, I'm not going to delve too far into, into that because I don't know anything about it. Um, all I am is a consumer. And uh, if I want a 48 scale hunter, then I'll pay that money, frankly. Um, but it does seem a little bit expensive um, to me. That's the hunter. Right, the other one then is the buccaneer, the crab buccaneer. We, um, <laughs> right, uh, crab buccaneer, I ought to explain, hadn't I? So, uh, clearly I'm from a naval background, um, into service rivalry and banter. Uh, we in the Navy call RAF people crabs. I am going to go into it. During the Second World War, sailors would, uh, on a run ashore, um, uh, would go and visit certain ladies and would bring certain diseases back with them. Apologies if this is a little bit unpleasant. Um, but they'd line up outside sickbay to be treated and uh, they were painted with a disinfectant. Uh, and that disinfectant was called crab fat jelly and was exactly the same colour as the Royal Air Force's uniform. Um, hence, we call them crabs. They call us um, fish heads, which is a little bit unimaginative, but then that's the aria for you. Right, so, <laughs> sorry about that, little um, diversion there. Uh, right, so the crab buccaneer, that's out in the autumn. It was inevitable, obviously, that that was going to come along, and more than likely this year. Um, nice to see it officially announced. Lots of different decal options. Uh, I quite fancy all of them, actually. Um, I quite fancy the early version, the um, green grey over the light aircraft grey. Um, really like that version. I uh, like the wraparound scheme. Uh, they, uh, they're going to do the desert one from Red Flag um, and a Gulf War one. And I really like the Gulf War one because you can really go to town on the weathering on that. In fact, they, are, they have announced the 72nd uh, Crab Buccaneer as well in uh, a Gulf War boxing. Um, so that's welcome. I really fancy getting one of these. I really fancy getting the Navy one as well, which I haven't yet. Um, the Navy one to do as a US Navy one, exactly the same uh, that I did in 72nd. I think that looked really smart in 48th. I'm severely tempted by that. And I may well go out and buy that one soon because Airfix have uh, a tendency that something will appear in the range for a set period of time and then it'll disappear and you can't get it for for ages you know things like the the javelin for example and they end up going for silly prices on ebay um but they eventually they do come you know they do cycle through again but it might take quite a few years and i don't want to miss out on that on the navy buccaneer so i may well go out and buy one of those um relatively soon um just in case it just disappear out of the range um, excuse me while I take a sip of my Oggin. Um, <clears throat> yeah, and to do that in US Navy colours, because there's obviously lots of aftermarket out for that um, 
now. So that's the Buccaneer. Right, so those are the three updated tools. The two new tools, uh, it's a 70 second scale F35B and a 48 scale Gannett. Talk about the F35B first. That's being released in the spring in three different guises. Um, on its own as a starter set, that's about 20 quid, that's 19.99. And then with a uh, 617 gift set, commemorating the 80th anniversary of the Dam Busters raid, um, that is going for, was that 50 something quid? Yeah, 54.99. And with the Spitfire, I'm assuming it's the 5C, which is 29.99. Uh, so that means uh, 34.99 for the Lancaster. Is that quite dear? Uh, I guess it is quite dear, but um, yeah, welcome anyway because it's a nice model. I'm not sure whether Air Airfix have released the Dambusters version of that Lancaster before. To be honest, it's been out quite a while, isn't it? The the Lancaster, but um, there we go. I, I I'm not sure. I'm sure someone will stick it in the comments below. Um, 72nd scale F35B, I'm sure it will sell really, really well for them, but the F35 just really doesn't float my boat at all. Uh, it really doesn't. Um, nothing to, with, you know, hating the F35, which for some weird reason lots of people do. I think that was to do with when it came into service, um, you know, it was uh, had limited capability, but as they developed uh, and did more testing, they could expand the envelope uh, and its capability and um, uh, over time and that is entirely normal for new aeroplanes it really is some people just really didn't understand that you have something called IOC initial operating capability which is um, a certain number of airframes that can deliver you some capability but not full capability and then you have FOC which is full operational capability which is later on down the line where you have your full complement of aeroplanes, um, they've been fully developed. And bearing in mind, obviously, this is a Mark I, essentially. Um, so there are going to be inevitable teething problems. Um, and uh, certainly the uh, we, the British, are, are not anywhere near FOC yet, I wouldn't have thought. But um, there you go, that's, that's where it is. So uh, for some reason, a lot of people hate the F-35. It's just, for me, as a modelling subject, it does nothing for me. It doesn't. Um, just one of those things. Lots of people love it. I don't. Um, you know, it's why I'm not going to get the Tamiya F35, um, which is an astonishing kit. It's, it's worth buying it just for the Bombay and Undercarriage Bay, that one-piece moulding alone, I think. But um, for me, I'm like, meh. Maybe it's something to do with, you know, there's not a lot of weathering potential on it. I don't know, but that's just me. Um, but I'm sure that will sell really, really well. That's going to be really, really popular, um, certainly with the masses. Right, and then on to the last one, which for me is the most exciting, is the Gannett in 48 scale. Now, I built, back in the day, the Dynavector Vacform Gannett. That was the fourth model I built when I came back to the hobby. So I did the Airfix C547 as my first one back. I then did the Hasegawa F4, the uh, K, the FG1 uh, in Fleet Arrow colours. I did the first generation Buccaneer. Um, I'm sure that had a resin cockpit in it, actually. Managed to wrestle that into submission. And then uh, the, the fourth one was the Gannett. Uh, I, I, I have a feeling it was we were going to see a Gannett from Airfix at some point, and I think it was always going to be 48th. You have the Trumpeter and the Ravel version in 72nd scale, so why would Airfix do 72nd when those two are already on the market? But 48th, I think it sits nicely. At 54.99, I think that's um, that's a fairly decent price actually. It's a big aeroplane. There's going to be lots of options in there, lots of ordnance. Um, uh, open Bombay, I'm sure there's going to be a closed Bombay option as well. Um, but detailed Bombay with ordnance going in there, underwing stores as well. Um, I'd imagine flares, rockets, maybe depth charges as well for the wings. And the big one is obviously the folding wing option. 
Now I don't know if it's going to be two completely separate parts there, so you'll get the parts for the spread wings and separate parts for the folded wings or whether you're going to have to cut along panel lines, um, cut the wings up to make the folding things. I've got a feeling they're going to be separate. I'm really hoping you're not just going to get the folding wing version that you're going to have to stick together in three parts to make the spread version. Um, I really hope, really hope that's not going to be the case. Uh, but we shall see. I'm really tempted by this model. Uh, I've got two ways of doing it in my mind. First one is to do an 815 squadron machine. They do an AS1 and an AS4. I really quite fancy doing an 815 squadron. That was my uh, Lynx squadron. So that would be really nice to do. I'd also quite like, um, I've got a feeling, I've got this picture in mind of a completed model with a, with a pint of Guinness next to it. Um, I can't stand Guinness, uh, but um, to have that next to it, because that was 815 Squadron's um, kind of unofficial symbol, and it was painted on the tail back in the day. Um, so that would be quite a nice picture, I think. But um, the other way of doing it could be a derelict one. I think it really lends itself to a derelict model. Really go to town on the weathering. The surface detail on the CAD renderings looks great. There's riveting detail in there. Um, I'm hoping... Um, that it's going to be in uh, moulded in the UK in that better plastic which is going to mould the detail much more crisply. Um, I'm really hoping for that. So all in all quite an exciting release and definitely I think the highlight of um, the announcements and when I was watching the live video go out on YouTube and reading all the comments it looked re a really really popular release. And like I say, I think they were going to get round to it eventually and it was only a matter of time and it's very exciting to see that announced for this year. That's due out again in the autumn, so I'm hoping that's going to, we'll see that before Telford. Or maybe even they'll release it at Telford, depends um, how far they get down the line. Uh, and it'd be really nice to see online because I'm not going to be able to get to Telford whilst I'm out in Saudi Arabia. And that hopefully is going to be quite a few years because I've got a nice big house to pay for. <laughs> um, so to see pictures of that online, it, it's going to be great. Um, I, I shall indulge vicariously, as it were. So a really exciting release there. Um, right, and that's the end of the list. So just my thoughts on that then, really. There's been some chatter online, and I, can, and I can see where it's coming from, that actually the number of releases was a bit light. I think when you look at across, it, uh, across the whole range, though, maybe not. To have the... Um, there's, some, there's some sort of quick, easy build cars, the taxi and the, and the London bus, I think are really quite cool, actually. I think they're... Um, yeah, I think that's great. Um, uh, the, there's a 43rd scale Series 1 Land Rover, which is going to be very nice, I'm sure. And the two, uh, I was going to say armour, they're not really, uh, well I suppose one of them is the ferret armoured car and the truck. Traditionally we haven't seen 35th scale uh, military vehicles from Airfix in the range. So the fact that they've uh, released uh, or announced two of those for 2023 and I imagine is probably why we've only got two new tooled aeroplanes. I think most people, uh, certainly most people who were complaining were a little bit blinkered on that fact and we're going, well, yeah, but I make aeroplanes and I want more aeroplanes and I totally understand that. I want more aeroplanes from Airfix, who doesn't? But I can see why there's only two new tools there um, because of what else they're doing right across the brand. So I totally understand that. Am I disappointed that I didn't see a Hampton announced in in there? Uh, yes, I am. Uh, and, and the reason I say that is because I think it's overdue. When I did my 
um, what kit I think I'm missing from manufacturers' ranges, i.e. the natural holes in there. Um, for me, the Hampton in Airfix is top of the list because when you look at their range, so, you know, for example, take green and brown aeroplanes from, say, 39 to 41 slash 42, so the first few years of the war. They've done the Blenin in both scales. They've done the Wellington, the, um, the Whitley. Obviously, we had the Anson last year in 48 scale. Um, I was kind of maybe expecting to see 72nd scale Anson this year to replace their classic mould. Um, maybe we'll see that next year. Um, the, the, you know, and some of the fighters, the Defiant, um, the Beaufort. Those early war green and brown aeroplanes, for me, the the Hampton is is missing. And I was kind of I was kind of thinking we might get it this year because of Guy Gibson flew it at the start of the war. And I thought, well, they could do, you know, the Hampton with Guy Gibson's markings. They could do the um, Bowfighter in Guy Gibson's maskings because that was his second tour with 23 Squadron. And then they could do the Lancaster in the 80th anniversary of Operation Chastise, the Dambusters raid. I thought that would... So I was really expecting to see that. So... Um, Slight disappointment for me. Um, I'm really hoping that we'll see that in 2024. Um, like I say, I think it's been a no, bit of a no-brainer. Uh, no-brainer, sorry. Um, and judging again by the comments in the YouTube video, uh, it was mentioned quite often, actually. Um, before the broadcast started, um, quite a few people were saying that they were hoping for a Hampton. And then afterwards, they, they were disappointed that they didn't see a Hampton. So... Um, yeah, I kind of share that disappointment, but, you know, uh, the anticipation and excitement for 2024 starts now on that. Um, I'd love to see them do it in 48th. I can't see that, to be honest. Maybe later on, after the 70, we've seen the 72nd scale version, but I think ICM to do a, a, a 48th scale Hampton, they've done the Beaufort in 48th to do a Hampton in 48th. That would be amazing. That really would. Has it got mass appeal? Mm, I don't know. How much appeal has a Beaufort got in compared to a Hampton? There's a discussion point. But, um, yeah. So I, I think if Airfix were to do a Hampton, it would be 72nd scale. Uh, the other one that was mentioned in the chat was the battle. And lots of people saying um, um, they would love to have seen a fairy battle. From announced it um, a ferry battle a few years ago, and we had the CAD renderings, and everything went um, as we say quite down the bearing. The reason was is they'd had a load of feedback on their CAD images, and um, what had um, kind of paused to go and do some more research, and they were going to tweak the design. Um, I've just put um, uh, yesterday at the time of filming uh, yesterday, or maybe even this morning. They, um, uh, I posted up that um, from, 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 that it's uh, it's been delayed because they have been tweaking it and there were some updated CAD images and that should be released in the spring, which is really exciting. So the fact that that's been sort of known um, about for quite a while in 72nd, I don't think we'll see a fairy battle in 72nd scale from Airfix, at least not any time soon. 48th scale, however, is a different matter. Now they've done um, the Blenheim in 48th, so why not the battle? And I think in 48th scale, a battle would again be really, um, really welcome. And again, we sit nicely in that range of green and brown early RAF aeroplanes. So again, maybe we'll see that in 2024 or 2025. We shall see. Okay. Um, I've talked about everything on the list. Uh, I've talked about um, some of the potential emissions uh, or maybe what we'll see in the next year or two coming from Airfix. Um, all in all, exciting times ahead, I think, for the brand. The 
Buccaneer was a step up in quality and I think really bodes well. The 24 scale Spitfire Mark 9 that has recently come out looks very very nice. Again the scale doesn't really float my boat but um, it seems really popular that that model. It always was going to be. I mean Airfix and Spitfires in any scale frankly um, go together like apple pie and custard. So, uh, you know, are we going to see a, a 24 scale um, release at some point? Uh, who knows? But um, the quality of that moulding, obviously moulded in the UK as well, and they, were, they invited a whole load of YouTubers down um, to the factory where it's moulded uh, to see the process and to see that and their quality control. Uh, it's clearly put their prices up when you look at the Hunter, the Buccaneer, but actually, I see why that I see why they've done it, and I would rather pay more for better quality airfix than than cheaper, and then get frustrated with it. Frankly, so it's good. I still think they've got a way to go. When you know, when you look, at, you can get some of the you know the Zukimura Phantom, for example, is the same price as the Buccaneer, and there is a definite different class in quality there but they're improving and that's a good thing definitely and it's all going in the correct direction so well done airfix thank you very much for what you've um, done for the hobby in recent years thank you for the 2023 announcements definitely thank you for the gannet which is definitely my highlight and um, exciting things to come as i say so i'll leave it there Thank you very much for watching and uh, I'll see you soon. Bye bye.